peace be with you. And welcome to Dice Street United Methodist Church. It is 2017, and I think we might have had more people here on New Year's Day, but I'm so grateful that you are here this morning. I know that it might be a little bit disappointing to some of you that we didn't meet in the narthex in the back of the church with delicious hot chocolate and coffee and tea and and all kinds of hors d'oeuvres and appetizers and cookies doesn't mean we can't do that. We don't have to wait to New Year, to Christmas Day or New Year's to do that. So anytime any of you would like to do something different, just say the word and we will do it differently. It will be fun. Um, this week, we have a number of birthdays, as you can uh, see up on the on board. Um, those are some belated birthdays. Um, we had some belated birthdays, and we have some birthdays this week, like Pat Jans on the 10th. Yay. And we also have some anniversaries. Chris and Donna Wilson's anniversary is this week. Um, you'll also notice that we have a few upcoming events. Uh, next Sunday is a movie Sunday, and um, it starts at 4 o'clock, and that Soul Surfer is the movie and it's right up there today after worship we get to do one of the sad things i think it's sad when we take down the decorations take down the lights take down the ornaments there are some new boxes um dale santman made us a nice new box which is in the back and we because we lost a couple of boxes due to a little leak we had in the, in the old kitchen. So there should be enough containers now to wrap that up. Stu will be on at, at noon time, so if anybody wants to stay afterwards and have some nice warm stew and some bread and, and things, um, please uh, stay. A new Sunday school class starts today, and we'll just come into the room one, get your book, just talk briefly so you can get you can get to um, taking down the decorations if you so choose. Are there any announcements? I see there's two people here that would like to make an announcement. Good morning. Just a couple of things. Um, if you have not picked, whoa, if you have not picked up your giving statements for 2017, they're still in the back. I'm going to move them to my office. So if you need one after that, they'll be in my office. Um, if you did not have a chance to turn in your commitment, commitment card in 2016, there are some in your pews, and you can fill those out and fold those and put those in the giving into the offering plate. Um, also, you saw Soul Surfer movie next Sunday, 4 to 6. Come and be on the big screen. Great movie, inspirational. Hope you come and enjoy that. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. I did get a note last week that... Some of the pencils need sharpening in the pew, in the tenants' books. So I have my sharpener. If your pencil needs sharpening, please just put on the text stand back there, the whole book, the attendance book also, and I'll get it back in the proper pew. Thank you. Good morning again. It's me. <laughs> I'm just going to pass the clipboard for signing up for ushering. We've got some openings we need to get filled. Um, I would hate to have to call Pastor Linda and say, Linda, we got no ushers. We can't have church. Have to call everybody, tell them to stay home. So I don't want to do that. So just please sign up. Thank you. Any others? Well, we are a people gathered together by a sign, and that sign is the water of our baptism. It is a sign that we are God's reconciled and forgiven people, that we are beloved, that the, the heavens open up and God declares us loved. So as beloved people of God, let us stand and uh, worship God by saying, I was there to hear your morning cry. It's found in the black hymnal number 2051, and the words will also be up on the screen.
please remain standing as you're able for the call to worship. And the words are in your bulletin and also on the projection screen. When we are reluctant to dip our toes into faith's river, when we are hesitant to cup our hands to drink from the fountain of grace, When we are unwilling to be the pipeline of hope. So come, let us worship God. And you may be seated. As we enter into a time of, of confession, Almighty God, we confess before you that we have not shown our light, we have been burned out drained, dry, run ragged. We are a tired people, busy with many things, our mind wandering on countless to-do lists and problems and worries. Relieve us of our burdens, O oh God, for you called us to place our burdens on you. Rekindle the fire in our hearts, O oh God, so that we might burn bright for you. Restore in us your spirit so that we will be renewed to continue to share the awe and wonder of the season and to let your light shine in us for all the world to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us ponder these words in silence. And hear these words of assurance and blessing. Jesus has been our path, breathed our air, carried our struggles. Life is not easy or fair, but it is worth it with a companion on this journey of faith. Give your burdens over to Christ and know that you are not alone, that you are restored, rejuvenated, and blessed by the God that loves you madly. And all the people of God say, Amen. and when the children join me, we're going to talk about today. Do you have any idea what we might be talking about today? We're going to be talking about Jesus' baptism. And um, I'm going to tell you this story. A long, 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 long time ago, even before your mom was born, <laughs> there, wa <laughs> there was a man named John. The water, and even before that John was born, the water covered his feet. Then it covered his knees. John stood in the water, and he called out, Come, everyone, come and be baptized. And the people came from their houses. The people came from the hills and the fields. There were so many people who wanted to hear about God. They were ready to be baptized and live God's way of love and peace. One by one, they walked into the river. John dipped them into the water and they said a prayer. And when they dipped them into the water, he dipped them in, like all the way. And he said, now you are baptized. Go and live God's way. So that was a, a symbol of when they were baptized. They were saying, I'm going to live in God's way. And as the people left, they felt clean and they felt new. And it was a wonderful feeling. Now, 
Near the end of one day, John looked up and he saw some, someone standing beside the river. And guess who it was? Now, there's a, a lot of people use the same answer for all the questions asked in church. And sometimes it's the right answer. Most of the time it is the right. Sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's not right. But lots of times people just say Jesus because you figure if the question's asked in church, you're going to say either God or Jesus. And this time it is. Guess who it is that's standing there? It's Jesus. And Jesus wanted John to baptize him too. Wow. Wow. I thought Jesus was already following in God's way. So John said, really? And John said a prayer to God, and he dipped Jesus into the river, and you know what happened? Something wonderful happened. And Jesus heard God say, and in a couple of the Gospels, they say other people heard it too, but Jesus heard God say, I am so pleased with you. And Jesus felt a dove gently touch him. And John and Jesus felt very happy. Wow. So I have got a picture for you to color. And look at this fun thing. You can make doves. I forgot to bring mine. I, I made one. I made one. Like, and I showed it to you not too long ago. Um, you take a piece of paper and you do your hand. We've done this a couple of times where you, you trace your hand and on a folded piece of paper and then you cut it out so it makes two things. And then you fold it together and then you cut the, the, the thumb a little bit differently and then the tail and you make a dove out of it. It's a fun thing. So, would you like to come up and get this? Here, one for you, one for you, William. And one for you, Brooke. There you go, Brooke. And we have snacks. We've got, we still have some holiday fruit snacks, naturally flavored with new artificial colors in it. And we've got these. And, okay, that's good. All right. Well, let's have a prayer before you go. How's it? Let's have a prayer. Okay. Loving God, you can repeat after me. And, you know, if you want to repeat it after adults want to repeat it and help these children, that would be great too. Loving God, today we remember that Jesus was baptized. And God, and God, said, I love you. God says to us, I love you. And we love you too, God. Amen. All right. Thank you. today comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. Now Matthew's account of John's baptism of Jesus is similar to Mark's and Luke's but John is astounded that Jesus wants to be baptized by him but Jesus announced that this is to fulfill all righteousness. John consents to baptize Jesus, and the heavens are opened, and the Spirit of God descends like a dove. And a voice declares, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? 
But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. These are the words of love for the people of God. And let us pray. May the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of my lips be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, how often do you think that Jesus remembered his baptism? Hmm. How often do you remember yours? At the beginning of every worship service, I pour water into a basin, into the baptismal font, and I said, remember your baptism. Do you remember your baptism? Do you remember a splash of water, a gasp of breath? Do you remember a startled cry as the water hit you? Your eyes wide open? Do you remember the community that cheered as they offered their welcome to you? Remember your baptism. I was baptized on August 6, 1952. I was three weeks old. I was held in my parents' arms, and I was surrounded by family and friends and a community of faith that would call me their own. The pastor placed his hands in the water and poured the water over my head onto my head once, then again and again, three times. I was anointed with oil on my forehead and on my lips and on my chest. I don't remember anything about that day. But this is a day that I will never forget. Every baptism, every baptism is an image of beauty in the midst of chaos. Recalling the chaotic waters of creation and the spirit of God hovering over the chaos, the abyss, the deep, to call forth beauty in her midst. Every baptism is a reminder of liberation from the exile when the waters were parted as the Israelites walked out of bondage and into hope. Every baptism is a reminder of liberation from exile, the waters parting as we walk out of bondage and as we walk into hope. Every baptism is an invitation For us to open our eyes and to see God at work in us and in spite of us. A holy wind rushing through the community of faith as we feel the water splash upon our skin. These are turbulent times. 2016 has been a turbulent year. But the waters of baptism invite us to hope. We hold our breath, the water splashing against our skin. We hold our breath, anticipating what is to come. We hold our breath, and we remember our baptism, and then we have hope. Baptism is saturated in hope. Jesus 
was raised up from the waters of the Jordan River. He became the hope for those who followed him, inviting them to discover a new way to live in the world, a new way that made it possible for us to actually love our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us, realizing that it's the kingdom of God, the reign of God, that is, is already among us. It is here now, with us and within us. We remember our baptism. You know, the baptism of a young child invokes a sense of awe and wonder. I see it in your eyes every time we lift up a baby and we pour the water. There is this collective hope of who this child will grow and become. How this community will welcome them and grow with them. The baptism of an adult embodies this hope in the midst of chaos, be it adolescence or elections or whatever stress one might experience. When we remember our baptism, we look forward with hope. I remember my baptism because my family would not let me forget. Along with traditional birthdays, um, not so much when I was baptized, but I, I got the pleasure of being the oldest of six, I mean of seven, of seven, I have six siblings. And some of them are much younger than me. And like all churches, but, Things change, rituals change. Like my parents were given a candle when I was baptized, but they kind of stored it away as a memento of my baptism. With my other sisters, one of the most meaningful baptisms is when we all got to stand outside of the church. All the whole community stood outside the church and we had to knock on the door and the pastor said, what do you want? And we said, we want this child to be baptized. And we all shouted it. We want this child to be baptized. And that candle was then remembered on the anniversary or the birthday of baptism. The anniversary, we were remembered. But for me, I got to get these little bronze shoes. Some of you are old enough to remember how shoes got to be bronze. Some of you are old enough to remember that there were several different shoes that you got. You know, the soft white ones and then the hard white ones. And the soft white ones, the first shoes, got to be forever. You get to remember it forever. But you can't see this. It's The glass is cracked. And the picture's not a very good one. But I always looked at it. And it, missing is the, the date here, August 6, 1952. Not my birthday, but my baptismal day. And in this picture is my mom and my dad holding me on the day I was baptized. So I always was able to remember my baptism. We would recount the ways that we have seen God in our lives and in our world. We would know that no matter what was raging around us, I was baptized. I belonged to God. And it would always belong to God. It is a permanent mark. Your baptism is a permanent mark. So how often do you think that Jesus remembered his baptism? Did he talk with his friends about that day at the Jordan River? Did he talk about what it meant when he finally claimed his ministry and it was public and he was claimed by God? as the beloved? Did he tell the story of the dove landing on his shoulder and the voice booming from the heavens? In the moments of despair, when he thought, how could these people do this? How could they hate one another? How could they not show love to one another? In his moments of despair, did his baptism offer him the hope? For another day. 
hope must be tangible as despair. The greater the chaos, the greater our hope. Whatever waters wage around us, we remember the story of God hovering over the surface of the deep. The people of God walking through the parted sea and the Son of God rising from the river to hear the words that echo at every baptism to follow. You are my beloved. So whether or not you celebrate your baptism birthday, you remember, you do remember your baptism. Remember that you are a beloved child of God and you're called by God to walk forward in the hope of new life for today and every tomorrow. I loved it when I would kind of crawl up or sit by as I got older and realize that my parents kind of permanently put those, those symbols of walking, <laughs> the symbols of walking the shoes and the walking next with my baptism. The baptism is about walking with God, always. So let's look at the past year and look at all the ways, all the way back to your baptism. All the way back. And live each day in that hope that God has claimed you. And that is forever. Thanks be to God. You will notice that um, Deb Oliver is not here um, to lead the choir. She is, um, she is sick, so prayers for her getting well. Um, and because she is sick and does not anticipate that it's going to be any better by tomorrow, um, our church council meeting, which would be the first one she'd be leaving, leading as our church council chair, will need to be.